Today's video is sponsored by Glassy Eyewear. So a lot has happened in the wireless mouse space as we head into the end of 2020. And what better way to test all the latest releases than to sit down to 12 solid hours of Cold War. Now, a lot of the mice that we're looking at today have already been reviewed in detail on the channel, but today we're gonna round it all up, talk about my updated impressions, some very specific comparisons, and hopefully help you find the right mouse for you. Because spoiler alert, there's no such thing as the best mouse. We're also gonna talk about that Ice Elements mouse pad from Glorious and how well it's held up through all this. You ready? Let's go! Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're checking out the latest wireless performance mouse offerings from 2020. Now, full disclosure, everything you're gonna see in today's video was sent out by their respective brands, but as you should know by now, doesn't influence my commentary in any way. So we're gonna be looking mainly at the Viper Ultimate, the Superlight, the Aerox 3, the Model O Wireless, and on the heavier side of things, the Kane 202 from Rokat. Now, to kind of set the stage here, I usually exclusively play Call of Duty, aggressive, run and gun, sniper, and SMG. I'm not a next level player or anything. Like I haven't been accused of hacking yet, but I've been cussed out plenty of times. I don't camp either, I'm out there in it. For a size and grip reference, my hand is 20.5 by 10.5 centimeters. I fingertip all of these mice. Since these have all been reviewed mostly already, we're gonna talk about any standout features, any specific updates. We'll get into performance stuff towards the end of the video. Nothing today is in any particular order, but we're gonna start with the Viper Ultimate because it's been my longest running main. It's been a long time since my original review and it's seen some updates since that original V1 version. I suppose I should say as well that it's my main for a few reasons. So if any of my commentary seems biased towards it today, probably is. Nonetheless, my only allegiance is to you guys and what works for me, not any brand or logo, regardless of how handsome they might be. So unique factors about the Viper. It's got optical switches. These get a bad rap for being mushy. And if you tried the V1 version only, that's understandable, but they've tweaked these. The new V2s, like the ones they use in the Viper Mini, are a lot less mushy and a lot more clicky. I don't know, you're not gonna confuse them with an Omron, but they're night and day versus the original. And even if they feel just a touch weird at first, you get used to them really fast. And they're really fast as well. I've had every version of this mouse, even unreleased prototypes, and now this ridiculously nice looking cyberpunk themed version as well that I'm terrified to use. I love the shape of this mouse. It's low, flat, similar to an FK, and not too dissimilar from the Model O wireless. It's one of the few at the top that has support for lefties, but I will say, after doing so many hours of direct comparison, these aren't my favorite side buttons. They feel like missing, too low to the frame in comparison to some of the others, particularly the super light. The charging dock is also something that really sets this mouse apart. It seems insignificant, but when you're done playing, you just drop it on the dock and walk away. Next time you walk up, you just pick it up, it's charged, it's good to go. I have very, very little negative to say about this mouse. My only real complaint here is that the force to depress the scroll wheel is super firm. Priced originally at $149.99 US, you can catch this on sale for $99 this holiday season. I'm sure they did this in response to the Model O wireless pricing and everybody wins for that because at 99 bucks, you're getting a lot of mouse. It's nice too that these are available like literally everywhere you can buy electronics. So in the rare instance that you do have a quality control concern, you have plenty of avenues to return or exchange. Before we move on, I just wanna stress that while you're looking at these mice today, the important thing to focus on is size, shape, and ergonomic features that are specific to your needs and your play style. We've reached the point where wireless performance is all pretty much competition level and sensors are near perfect. It honestly makes it pretty easy to be a mouse reviewer nowadays. Shout out to guys like Zai, Rocket Jump Ninja who laid the groundwork for reviews just like this back when they had to deal with stuff like dodgy sensor performance, liftoff stuff, sensor surface incompatibilities. We largely don't have to deal with any of that now. Next up is the Model O Wireless from Glorious because in overall shape and grip style, it's really similar to the Viper Ultimate as they both kind of have that FK inspired vibe. I hold them very similar, but there's something about the grip on the Viper being just that tiny bit narrower that seems to work better for me. Standout stuff here, there's no left hand support and the frame obviously has holes. They also make ceramic feet for their mice if you want to explore that, though I personally don't find anything wrong with PTFE for most use cases. It does have USB-C, 
but it's got a proprietary connector. I'm not even sure why, as it seems to play and charge just fine with a standard USB-C regardless of orientation, but I wouldn't risk damaging the mouse. I like the side buttons here better than I like the Viper Ultimate. It's reassuring to know they're right there, but they also have a strong enough tactility that I never accidentally press them. This is easily the best quality Model O we've seen so far. It feels really well built. Both my copies are exceptional, like really top tier, but I have heard low murmurings of quality control stuff, both in the side buttons and that dreaded squeaky scroll wheel. I don't have that issue with my copies. I actually like the scroll better here than I do on the Viper. And that's something you have to consider from a consumer standpoint as well, because depending on where you live in the world, chances are you're buying direct. So if you do have an issue with your copy, you're gonna be dealing with glorious customer service. And I don't say that to throw any shade. I wanna be very clear about that. It's just that it's objectively less convenient than dealing with something like an Amazon return on the off chance that something doesn't go your way. This came really close to replacing the Viper as my main. A question I get a lot is that now that the pricing is so similar between this and the Viper Ultimate with that holiday discount, which one would I go with personally? And we will get to that for sure when we talk about the performance conclusion. Got to get in a quick word from today's sponsor. We'll be right back. Big thanks to Glassy Eyewear for sponsoring today's video. Based in Southern California, Glassy makes some of the dopest styles out there for sunglasses, prescription glasses, and most importantly, gaming glasses. No, not glasses that make you better at gaming. Glasses that filter blue light to help reduce eye fatigue. I know that some of you aren't sold on the science behind these. I get it. I've done the research. I've read the articles. I've watched all the videos. Obviously, I'm no optometrist, but between gaming and editing, I stare at a screen all day and I always keep a pair of these at my desk. For me personally, they cut down on the eye strain I feel at the end of the day after sitting in a low light studio all day and staring into a bright monitor. It was an issue for me before, now it's not. Whether you were fortunate enough to score a PS5 or a new GPU, or you're just waiting for Cyberpunk to come out, chances are you're gonna be getting some serious screen time this holiday season. Right now, they're running their cyber sale and everything on the site is 20% off. Plus they've got free shipping and free returns. So if they're not for you, there's no risk. Click the link in the description to check them out. Thanks again to Glassy for sponsoring today and thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Now with the very tip top of price points, we have the recently released Super Light from Logitech. I think people misunderstood the point of this mouse. I think there's this perception out there that Logitech took away a bunch of stuff and then charged us a lot more money. I don't think that's fair. This is a very specific mouse for pro level FPS players. This is like a dude that's got a nice car and he soups it up to be really fast, but he pulls out like the air conditioner in the passenger seat to save weight. It dumped support for left-handed users, which is a shame, but it really cut the weight. Didn't make any sacrifices to the build quality and lost the RGB, which benefited both the weight and the battery life. If you're a fingertip player, high sensitivity, yes, the weight is noticeable. It's the lightest of all the wireless options and you can't can tell in hand. I can fingertip this mouse with a really light touch and I've really grown to like it. That's odd for me to say because I don't think it's any big secret that I've never been a fan of the GPW shape. It's a taller egg shape that's so smooth I feel like I could never find a consistent grip. I've been able to overcome that with this mouse. The move to stick with micro USB as opposed to USB-C was more a marketing blunder than a functionality concern, but nothing tops the Viper's charging dock for pure convenience. On the topic of double clicks, these have new switches. I'm not sure why people kept overlooking that in the review, but if you had double click issues with Logitech stuff before, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have them here. Even G Pro wireless copies as new as the Ghost still had the old switches, but I think they've been making new copies with the new switches starting since the Shroud version was released. I like this mouse. The more I use it, the more I like it, but that $150 price point, still kind of hard to swallow. Again, if you're gonna pull the trigger on this, it will be available everywhere. So buy from somewhere with an easy return policy if it doesn't fit the bill for you. If you need left hand support or one RGB and don't mind a heavier weight, the G Pro Wireless remains in market at a price of $129.99. Next up is the Aerox 3 from SteelSeries. I was pretty hard on this thing in the review. It's got the lowest end build quality of the bunch and the strangest feet of the bunch as well. I did really like the shape. When I light fingertip this thing, neither the frame nor the feet are really an issue, but oddly, the more time I spend with this in comparison, the less I like the shape. It's the most comfortable to me and the most consistent in terms of hitting shots when I hold it like this. The trouble is it puts the front thumb button out of reach for me. If I choke up on the mouse and try to hold it here, it's not comfortable anymore and I'm not consistent with it. I just reviewed it in detail, so I'm not gonna dive too much into it. At a hundred bucks, it's arguably the best offering from SteelSeries. And if you know already you're a fan of this style of shape, 
It's a solid mouse. It's the only one on the list with universal USB-C. It's also the only mouse whose dongle is also USB-C. Something to be aware of depending on your setup. The weight here is lower than anything else on the list except for the super light, the wireless performance, the battery life, all 100% solid. I just don't vibe with this mouse. I tried. Closing it out with a brand I had never even used until quite recently, this is the Kane 202 Wireless from Ruckap. If the trend towards lighter and lighter mice just isn't for you, this is one to take a look at at 105 grams. The build quality here is wow. I mean, it feels like I could throw it through a window, pick it up, and finish the round with it. It's a handful, for real. It's got a similar length as the others, but it's easily the tallest on the list, and it's not a symmetrical shape. There's a definite fall off from right to left. I love the scroll wheel here. It's wide, good tensioning, forced to depress is easy. Love the side buttons. Again, if small side buttons aren't for you, these are very generous. A little pre, but no post travel, really solid. Triggers feel good. Despite it being a little older than a lot of the mice on the list, the wireless performs really well to me. If it's good enough for the two time, it's probably good enough for you too. So as far as performance in game, I will say that every one of these mice performed well. I had play of the games with each of them. Of the list, I personally performed the best consistently with the super light and the Viper Ultimate. And between those two, I performed consistently the best, hands down, with the Viper Ultimate. Flick after flick after quick scope, this is the one that delivered for me. If I was using a different mouse and having a bad start to a match, I could swap back to the Viper and finish strong. Now, as I said, this is my main, has been for a really long time. I know every nuance of this mouse, how the glides feel, how the triggers feel, the grip that feels perfect because I've been using it for so long. It's predictable because it's baked into my motor memory. I play more confidently, I take risks, and I'm more aggressive. So I wind up putting more points on the board. There's undoubtedly some bias there because I've been using this mouse for so long. I know that when the Viper Ultimate first launched, there was a lot of focus in the marketing about stuff they had done in Synapse at a firmware level that supposedly made the sensor more accurate. Even in my own review video, I highlighted that a lot. So I tested it both with Synapse enabled and with it completely uninstalled. Two things. Number one, whether or not it was installed did not affect the sensor tracking for me or my ability to land shots at all. Two, I really think there's something to be said about the speed of the optical switches in this mouse because in times when I was in a face-to-face -face gunfight or sniper versus sniper, I snapped earlier than the other guy, not sometimes, consistently, even going against the same guys multiple times in different lobbies. So on the topic of value, if when you're watching this, the Viper is $150 and the Model O wireless is 80 and budget is a concern, go for the Model O wireless. It's a solid mouse. If the pricing is similar, Viper gets the nod for me, even though I don't like the side buttons or the scroll wheel as much as I do on the Model O wireless. If you like the GPW shape and you want the highest performing version of that mouse and you're not left-handed, Super Light is a beast. If you've always been a fan of the Steel Series shape, AROX 3 and buy some new glides. And if you like a heavier mouse for stability, the Rocat is solid. And if budget is really a big concern, that G305 at 50 bucks is always still out there. And as promised, on the topic of how well this Elements Ice Pad has held up, I've mained this pad since the day it arrived here to see if I could get it to start to wear down because I liked it so much right out of the box. Now, I've seen some people out there really having problems with it, and I've seen other people out there that really enjoy it. Confession time. I pulled a Linus and dropped a knife onto this thing. That's 100% me. I don't feel like that's a valid mouse pad test. It didn't land where I normally use my mouse anyway. This pad has probably 50, 60 hours on it now, and it is starting to show signs of slowdown. Dead center, where I use it most. It's still not slow, it's just not as fast as the outer edges, so I'll continue to keep an eye on it. Still my favorite pad I've had in a long time. Coming up in a couple videos, I'll run down all the lightweight wired mice that I missed because because companies are literally trying to bury me in review videos this month. So stuff like the Haste, the Burst Pro, the HSK, the Ducky Feather, the MM720, we'll hit all those in one video. As always, links down in the description for everything that we talked about today. Any questions, hit me in the comments. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.